The genocide of Rwanda in 1994 was partly attributed to the media which was called Hatred Media, headed by La Deux Television Libre de Mircolin, RTLM. I managed to speak to Mr. De Guin, Mr. Hervé De Guin, who was uh, uh, the director for Africa in uh, RSF, uh, Reporter Without Borders. He know particularly the case of RTLM and one of its founders, uh, Mr. Nahimana Ferdinand, who recently published a book entitled Rwanda Le Virage Arati. Mr. Degin, do you think really media played a certain role or a decisive role in the genocide in Rwanda? Yeah, I think certainly the media uh, have played a key role before the genocide by contributing uh, to uh, conditioning people and during the genocide, RTLM, this is very well known, uh, has contributed to, to uh, uh, make things good going worse uh, during the genocide. You are here in Brussels to participate in a debate about a book authored by one of RTLM's founders, Mr. Naimana Ferdinand. Do you think Naimana played a role in that medium called RTLM? Of course, it's a very complex uh, question. Naimana has just been sentenced to 30 years in prison for having uh, uh, for being committed in inciting people to genocide because of his personal responsibility in uh, setting up Radio Milkolin and in, uh, in in participating somehow uh, in the, the work of this radio station during the genocide. Now, of course, this is not a very simple question. Uh, mm. He was first trialed in Arusha and uh, sentenced to in, in 2003 uh, for many reasons and uh, he, there was an appeal at the court in uh, Lae, in The Hague and uh, part of the accusation was uh, rejected. cancelled, mm. rejected. So uh, this uh, uh, incites us to challenge the assumptions of the, the tribunal mm -hmm. and I'm currently writing a book in which I try to, to highlight different aspects of this mm. question. I will come back to your book uh, in a moment, but I'd like to rather talk about your responsibility as RSF official in, 19, uh, in the early 90s. You said during the debate that there were some manipulations being made at certain levels and that somehow RSF was a victim of that kind of manipulation taking place. Can you tell me more about this uh, manipulation of information that were coming to RSF? Of course. I think Reporter with the Reporters Without Borders is a very influential organization in the field of uh, uh, press freedom and of course there is always uh, uh, a risk that some organization come to us and try to uh, how can I say, manipulate uh, the opinion within the organization and in 1994 it was the same actually nobody was really an expert on Rwanda and it was very easy to bring us evidences or, wit or, or, or witnesses who were able to, to, to speak and explain the situation this is what happened and for a few months it is clear that uh, we had somehow a biased uh, view on the question highlighting the responsibility of uh, uh, Hutu extremist media but mm -hmm. probably underestimating uh, the other side of the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, during the, your presentation you said that uh, Nahimana's uh, book has uh, somehow disappointed you to some point especially uh, as to the style, the rigor of the book. What aspect especially has disappointed you as far as uh, the book is concerned? Is it the content or the style of the tune of uh, the book? Well, actually, there are two things. I, I, I would be critical to the style because I thought it was not of the same quality as the historical work Neymar did before the 90s. He was a historian. He published many very good articles and books, uh, very precise, concise, documented, and I found this book less uh, persuasive. Now, the second aspect is that uh, I expected to find some answers to key questions in the book, and I didn't find this, this content. So there are, there are a few points regarding this period that I would like still to question, and, and uh, I, I didn't find the answer in the book. Mm -hmm. You said you were writing or you were finalizing a book, a biography of Nahimana. Naiman is not a friend of yours, Naimana. Why focusing on Naiman as a person? What do you want to prove as a historian? 
it's just by chance. The first time I went to Rwanda, it was exactly the time when Radio Milkolin started to broadcast, so I had a special interest in this history. And Naimana is one of the very few intellectuals who really tried to think about the history of Rwanda. So his, his uh, commitment, political commitment, uh, is very interesting because he has some strong uh, uh, intellectual analysis on the society. And um, many things have been... Uh, said and printed about Nahimana, but most of this material is very light and, and weak and I would like through this research to have a more documented opinion. A French journalist uh, whom perhaps you know Pierre Payan is facing uh, justice, the French or the Belgian justice, for having written strong uh, theories about the Tutsis. Uh, don't you think you are facing uh, a same risk by publishing about a convict, uh, let's say somebody who is sentenced by a, a UN tribunal. Well, first of all, regarding the book of Mr. Péan, I must say that uh, uh, there are certainly many mistakes in the book and it was probably too fast about a few topics and talked in, sometimes in the wrong way. But nevertheless, those who are now uh, prosecuting him, who are now trying to, to, to sentence him, are not very clean people and we must question what's the agenda behind. So this is for the book of Mr. Péan. Regarding my book, I don't think so. I think uh, I try to be very careful and uh, to, 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 to explain things really as they happen with a lot of documentation and first-hand interviews. So I don't think there's a risk. Mm -hmm. When will it be published? Uh, hopefully before the end of this year. Okay, thank you very much and uh, have a nice trip back to Paris. Thank you very much.